Hey YouTube, this is my dissection video on my latest elevator and I'm just going to take you through how it all works and explain some of the mechanisms I used in this elevator. So I'm going to start off with the floor selector panel. So when we press a button over here, then it will send a signal across these repeaters and into this torch tower which will send the signal up. It will also send the signal into this down circuit and it will send the signal all the way down the elevator. But we get a problem because the signal will also go up and go into the down circuit again and create a big mess. The way we get around this issue is by cutting off the signal with this piston. So if the this button's pressed it will just go into the down circuit as normal. But if we come from below it will turn off these repeaters which will retract this piston and that means the signal won't be able to pass down again so that means we only get one down signal and that's how we solve the problem now we have a signal that's been transferred to every single floor of the elevator so now what we can do is filter these to get what we want so let's say we press this button then it would activate this line but not this line and turn on this dropper and that would set this floor to be on like this but if we press any other button then it will activate the other dropper and reset it also whenever we press any of the buttons it will activate this light blue line and that will call the elevator to the floor also for example we are on floor 10 so if we press anything 9 or below we want to activate the down circuit so that's where this bit comes in and it will send another signal into the logic of the elevator that tells it that we're going down. The blue circuit is responsible for the pistons in the elevator shaft. So here is the input for the right hand side and when we turn it on the first thing will happen is it will push the piston in position to be pushed into the elevator shaft. The next thing that will happen is this piston will activate and it will make it so the piston will extend when pushed into the elevator shaft. So then after three ticks this repeater will turn on and it shall be pushed into the shaft and extend. Also this repeater shall turn on, this torch will turn off and this dropper will be ready to activate. So if we just turn that on so now when we turn this all off the first thing that will happen is this will retract and then this will retract and then this will retract but then when this turns off it will send, turn this torch on and this dropper will, will be activated and push this back again so let's just see an action so when we press the input do that and turn it off again it's all moved back into position one of the problems we face with this design is that the pistons are not level when you arrive at a floor and the way we fix that is by using a little trick with signal strength so if we activate this repeater it will activate both of these dusts but if we only activate these two repeaters then it won't activate this and the piston shall be like this. So the way we can do this is by lowering signal strength with a cauldron. So when the floor is selected, the cauldron will be up and it will shall reduce the signal strength of this comparator by one. But if the floor isn't selected, it shall it would be down and won't affect it and both repeaters would be powered.
the way we get this elevator to go up is by activating this pink circuit and this dust will power this repeater which powers this dust which powers this repeater and so on all the way up the elevator spiraling around and when we activate this then all the pistons will go up but now it's stuck so the only way to remove the signal from here is to remove these blocks out of the way and see it's removed one also we need two of these to keep track of each side of the elevator the way we control the movement of these blocks is through this lime green circuit here so if we activate this then you'll see they'll all go down uh, you may recognize this from CMB's original elevator it's the same circuit and we can also use this orange circuit to clear the whole thing from below so if we just get a lever then you'll see that the torch tower will go up and it will power these blocks turn these torches off and retract these pistons this RS Norlatch controls whether the cool feature has been activated so when we press a button it will activate this line and activate the dropper and the item will be moved and then when we press the button to release the elevator then it will reset it and the elevator will be on its way but if we move to a different floor we also want it to reset and that's what the white circuit is for this redstone torch is what controls whether or not this is reset or not so this line will turn off whenever a button is pressed on any floor but we don't want this to be reset if the button was pressed on the current floor so this signal continues on and holds this torch off so if we have this on then it doesn't matter what we do here the torch will remain off when a floor is selected the yellow circuit will turn on and it will go into the side of this comparator and this comparator is on subtraction mode so 15 minus 15 is 0 so this piston turns off and the elevator can't go any higher than this bit here a similar thing happens on the other side if we just follow the signal it would go all the way over here and it would subtract from this repeat comparator as well the yellow circuit also controls whether these cauldrons are up or not you see this floor is selected and the cauldron is up and that means it shall subtract one from here and cause the pistons to be at the correct height when the elevator is called to a floor the torch on the floor will turn off and lead down this line over here and turn on this torch this torch leads into this dropper which will send the pulse into the orange circuit another pulse is sent over here and that will cause the pink circuit to turn on and if the elevator is on floor 3 and you're on floor 30 then the elevator will just be turned on at floor 30 and that signal will then propagate all the way downwards as well the blue circuit also needs to hold the elevator at the current floor so it needs to activate the yellow circuit but if you notice that the yellow circuit also looks like it's going to power this dropper and call the elevator to the floor when we don't want that so we can use a little trick with signal strength again so that when the 
elevator is held at this floor, it only has a signal strength of one, and it needs a signal strength of two or more to power this bit. So that's why this torch can power it, but the comparator can't. When we want to cool the elevator, uh, let's just press a button over here, then the elevator is cool. Then this torch will now turn off, and that's what causes this torch to turn on and reset this side of the elevator, and also means that this turns on and resets the other side of the elevator. But when we want the elevator to leave, this will be reset because we press the button over here and this this uh, dropper dropper over here, it's quite hidden, is reset and then this line will turn back on again and that means that it is no longer being held at this floor by the yellow circuit. Whenever we press a button, then the reset line for that floor will be activated and it will reset the RS null latch that controls the down circuit. However, if the down circuit is meant to be activated, then it will activate this repeater over here and that will then set it. So every time you press the button, it shall be reset. And then after that, if it's meant to be set, then that little bus line over here that was shown earlier will activate and the down circuit shall be set again. We only want the elevator to leave, however, when we are ready. And that happens when we press this button. So the power from this comparator will follow through into this comparator where the signal will be blocked because the RS snow latch that controls the whether the elevator is cooled to the floor will also be on and then that will subtract and do 1 minus 1 equals 0 so we get no output then when we press this button then this RS snow latch will be reset a signal will be allowed to pass through here, the down circuit will activate and then a signal will go through a repeater over here and reset this RS null latch so that it is off again. The way the down circuit causes the elevator to go down is simply by powering the lime green circuit at the right level and there's two lime green circuits so it just powers both of them and that's how the elevator goes down. When the elevator has come down far enough and has arrived at the correct floor it needs to be stopped from going down any further. The way we do that is take a signal from the yellow circuit here and put it into the cyan circuit. The cyan circuit will lock the repeaters in the lime green circuit and that stops the signal from going down any further and therefore the elevator will not go down any further. The purple circuit controls the safety doors, uh, indicator lights and the ding dong noises. So this side it wraps all the way around the back of the dark blue circuit and into the pistons. Uh, this bit also goes below and activates the uh, indicator light there and also the note blocks for the ding dong noises. And the other side simply connects much more easily into the piston over here. For the safety doors to open three conditions need to be satisfied. If the elevator is too high up then this repeater from the pink circuit will keep this torch off. If the elevator is too low, then this repeater will keep this torch on so that this torch will stay off and the door stay closed. 
Also, if the elevator is just passing through a floor, then these conditions will be satisfied, but we don't want it to open. That's why we have the third condition. The third condition is whether or not the floor is selected. So this torch is controlled by this dust, which is powered by this uh, comparator here. And this piston is moved in and out of the way by this dust here that comes from the yellow circuit. With these conditions however, the doors would only shut when the elevator has started to move. But if the person is going up, then they will be kicked out. So we need to shut the doors before it starts to go up. That's why when this light blue circuit turns back on again, this dropper will be powered and a signal will be sent along this comparator line into this dust. This dust will be turned on, the torch will turn off, and then the doors will shut. The top of the elevator is actually a special case because every other floor connects into one of these RS NOR latches, but the top doesn't need one. This is because the elevator, if there's nothing stopping it, will just go straight up. So that means there is no uh, yellow circuit for the top floor and there is no dropper dropper RS NOR latch for the top either.